Okay, I'm here Group 1 in Brighton and I've just picked up my brand spanking new BMW R1300 GS aka Jeff I'm all about bollock tickling and so far this is giving me movement Gee, Oh my good god This thing punches and if you like to wheelie it's been down the gym it's maybe on a little bit of testosterone and it started Jiu Jitsu Right, okay, so she's not brand new. Uh, picked her up on Thursday, this is now Monday. I've just had the first service done. So she's got about 500 odd miles on the clock, but that does mean that I've done all the boring running in bollocks, and now we can have some fun. The bike was ceramic coated by uh, Super Shield Auto. My mate Pete Ham Sandwich came over yesterday, thoroughly cleaned her, ceramic coated her, and I rode her in the rain this morning, so she's all clarted in dubs again. But anyway, right, what do we think? My first reactions, I did actually record them on Thursday when I picked them up, but me being me, I got home and uh, formatted the memory card of my cameras, thinking I'd already swapped them across to a hard drive, and I hadn't. Never mind. So first reaction, um, not as bad as I thought it was going to be looks wise. When I saw the pics and the vids, I, uh, that's Darren who's bought my old bike. Good man, top man Darren, nice to meet you. Uh, yeah, when I first saw the pics and the vids of them, I thought, ooh, I don't think I like the look of it, especially the headlight. I've got to say, I really, really like it. It's unmistakably a GS. <laughs> unmistakably a GS. Um, looks smaller, uh, it's weird. Bike of two halves. The front looks nice and big, like what I think a GS should. And the back in the pics looked like, well, I just thought it was a Honda NC750, to be honest. Um, in the flesh, no. The back looks quite athletic and it really follows these lines beautifully, literally from the, the tip of the beak all the way through to the arse. There's a beautiful line, flowing line all the way through. And it's got really nice, curvaceous figure to it. Little thin waist, out to down here at the derriere, and a big old buxom front end. Sat here in the cockpit, absolutely 100% a GS. And to be honest, I think from any angle, I would think that is a GS. Certainly you can draw some similarities to the V-Strom, the NC750 in places, but undeniably a GS. Right, enough of the chatting. Let's go for a ride. Oh. Sorry about the uh, little passenger I've got here. It's my old Jekyll and Hyde exhaust off of the um, 1250. That has been taken off. Sadly, it doesn't fit on the new 1300. So it's been rehomed to somebody. <laughs> right, so sat on the bike itself. What's it like? Much firmer, much firmer ride. I'll go into all the guff, but uh, in the dash here, you can not only adjust the suspension like you could before from like road and dynamic, auto, all that sort of stuff. You can also uh, adjust the dampening, which means you can have as soft or as hard a ride as you like. I like a nice firm ride, so that's what I have it set. And yeah, let's get into it, let's go. Actual cockpit itself is very familiar. Uh, the keyless ignition that has moved, there used to be a button here, it's now a button there. So you start and stop from that, the actual ignition itself. Just let it warm up a little bit. You can see there, I've got 505 miles on the clock, all being me, bar I think she adds, she, I keep saying she, I think it had six miles on the clock when I first picked it up on uh, Thursday. So you can see there from the dash, we'll go into all this when we go. I would say she's warm enough. There we go again. I would say he's warm enough. Let's go. Straight away, I said this on Thursday, there is pull straight away. I mean, I'm, I, you can see there, I'm not exactly breaking world speed records here and I'm hardly touching the throttle, but just above 2,000 revs, you can feel it pulling more than the 1250 did, certainly loads more than the 12 did, but it's noticeable straight away. Now, although this isn't my first ride of the bike, this is gonna be my first proper ride of the new 1300, because now, Jeff's all run in. The engine even sounds different. I always say this when I get a bike serviced for the first time. I don't know what they do, but the engine even sounds different. It has that whine, do you hear it? It's like a Triumph whine. Can't really hear it there, but when you've been on the power and you roll off, and it's sort of just gliding, 
Let's have a listen here. Can you hear that sort of wheeze that kicks in? Anyway, let's get through the traffic and we'll have some fun. Oh, this is only a 30, slow it down smart. Yeah, now going to, uh, what was I talking about earlier? Yeah, the suspension settings. Now, something I noticed, I watched uh, Chris Eads, Baron Von Grumble. I watched his review on 44 Teeth. Uh, who else did I watch? I had a little look at some of the uh, username Kate's. Uh, a lot of people have been speaking about the suspension and the ride height, saying that it's much lower than the 1250 and the 1200. I'm not really sure what bike you've been riding because I don't, I don't think there's any difference at all personally in seat height. Maybe you had, maybe you had a lower bike, a lower seat. Maybe you had the suspension set not at its maximum height or firmest ride. I don't know, but uh, the way I have this bike set, literally I pulled up, got off my 1250, handed that in, and jumped on the 1300. For me, there was no difference in ride height at all. What I do notice is the bike is significantly thinner in the crotch. It's like he's wearing a corset and it's been pulled very tight just below the dangways. Anyway, you know what I mean? Here, it seems much thinner. It seems much thinner between the knees as well, actually. Speaking of which, I'm going to go on about build quality because it is undeniably way higher than the previous 1250-1200s. As I said, I just had the bike ceramic coated by my mate Pete at Super Shield Auto. Something he kept going on about was, oh my God, wow, this is so good. You know, they've changed this metal and that metal. One thing that we both noticed was where you grip the tank with your knees, that is already showing some marks. And I've had this on my Jixxers when I, uh, when I was riding my Jixxers before, literally before the first service was done, did exactly the same thing. Your knees would wear like the frame, the paint on the frame. Well, it's doing it to the paint here. You will 100% need something like the easy grips, the stomp grips, some sort of physical protection on your paintwork at the sides here. Definitely get it when it becomes available because I'm wearing through mine already. And that's just been from light, light riding. Uh, oh, transparency is something I have to um, let you know about. You might see there, there is a, a warning light. This morning on my way to Sh Chandler's, I was coming along the M25, I got caught in a torrential downpour and the uh, warning came up and said SOS function or something inhibited, something like that, I'm not sure what it was. But anyway, I've had that warning light ever since, I told BMW about it there when I dropped it off and BMW are now on the case. Folks, this is not a bad thing, this is a brand new bike, with brand new bikes you're going to have issues, totally expected it, it doesn't cause me any concern. In the slightest, bikes have issues. If you ride bikes, you're gonna get issues from time to time. For me, it's how it's dealt with. I had this sort of customer service from DMW before I was at the stage where I turned up at a dealership and people knew me. So in my eyes, they don't treat me any different now to how I was treated before. I hope they treat everybody like that. If you have experienced different, and I'm not talking about your mate down the pub once talk about his Uncle Albert who once said he was treated badly by BMW, I mean you. If you have had a bad experience, let me know. I always say vote with your feet. You need to be vocal about this. Manufacturers, companies, they need to know about any issues with their customer service or their product. Anyway, back to the brand new BMW R1300 GS. National sync them up one two three. Okay, let's see what this power's like into third. I mean, it's going to be very hard to test the performance of this bike and stay legal because even running it in. Oh, that was a false gear change. Trying to go from fourth to fifth, which went into no man's land. Okay. This thing is very, very sporty. Okay, down into 30. 
brakes are lovely. Really do like these brakes. Fully Brembo brakes now. Branded up as BMW on the outside, but if you look on the inside of the caliper, it's uh, Brembo. And they are beautiful. They look really, really nice. Very angular, which is weird, because the rest of the bike is sweeping curves. Oh good, we've got level crossing. See that, when you turn the ignition off, the screen sinks down. It's a fully adjustable screen, I'll get into that, but the screen will return to whatever height you had it set at uh, before you turn the ignition off. And it does it, typical BMW, no, no. We're not gonna do it when the ignition is switched on. No, 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 no. We'll wait till you hit four or five miles an hour and then it kicks in and brings the screen up. Nice little touches like that, I like it, typically German. Never be a sheep, forge your own way ahead. I like that. What was I talking about? I can't remember. I'll get back to you when the train's gone. Right, watch, watch. So, turn the ignition on, watch the screen. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And there we go. It's about five, six miles an hour. And that's not just like a time thing. I've sat here and waited and it's not gone up. It's definitely only once you start moving. All right, may as well. We're sat at 30 miles an hour. I'm in third gear. It's about two and a th not quite two and a half thousand revs. What's it like? Beautiful. The engine's just ticking over. You can hold that all day. It's not lumbering, there's no protesting from it. Absolutely nothing. Got to check of the mirrors. Roll on the throttle up to 40. So can I hold? Again, you can hold 40, no problem. What's it like? Into fourth, slight incline coming up ahead. Again, absolutely no problems there. And there they are, I can see them up ahead. Come on everybody, let's hear you. That's right. National! Oh, brake lights. Down into third, let's pull out here. Cyclists, the overtake is not on. That's right, two abreast and a nice country twisty road. Why wouldn't you? You wonder why you get wiped out. Anyway. So, that second. Gee, oh my good god. Um, yeah, if you're coming from a 12 or 12.50, you will certainly have to recalibrate your throttle. <laughs> and your brain. This thing punches. It almost feels light in the front now under acceleration. Because, well, to be frank, it is. There's definitely more grunt there, so it's it's definitely lifting the front more than the previous models. I'm not saying you're wheeling everywhere, but the front will feel a little bit lighter. So that takes a little bit getting used to initially. And if you like to wheelie, okay, this is still no KTM, you know, in terms of that out and out hooligan, but it's I've used this analogy a couple of times with mates, and I actually think it is very apt. This thing is, this thing is your middle-aged man. You know, you're now in your 40s. You know what life's all about. You know what you want from life. But maybe you're just being divorced. Maybe you're deciding that, you know what? I need to tidy myself up a bit here. It's been down the gym. It's maybe on a little bit of testosterone and it started jujitsu. This thing is confident in itself. It can handle itself, but it's not out there looking for a fight. This is my kind of bike. Oops, Yev. And there's the Nationals. And into the 40. Brakes. That reminds me. Yes, brakes. We were chatting about brakes before the train. Yeah, I don't know the exact spec, what Brembo's they are. I'll pop it up on the screen now if that is important. Speaking of which, folks, I'm not going to regurgitate the owner's manual or the PDF that the press department send us. I'm not interested in facts and figures. All I want to know is how a bike f makes you feel and how it handles. Journalists out there, I know, some of them think that's weak. I don't particularly care, but that's all I'm interested in in a bike. How does this thing make me feel? Does it tickle my danglies? If you want to know facts and figures, check out someone else's channel, check out some other vids out there, or go to the BMW website and have a look, or Google it. I'm all about bollock tickling. And so far, this is giving me movement. Into the nationals. 
Okay, we are third gear. Have a look at this. You're going to have to look at me, not here. Oh, oh my good God. Jeez, that is ridiculous. I think that is definitely KTM levels. Um, possibly a bit more. Uh, wow. I wasn't expecting to get to that speed that quick. That was pretty... Wow. I would not have thought we were going that quick if I hadn't glanced down at the dash. That's insane. Um, okay, so in that terms, is this dull? Is this so refined? It's dull. I remember something like, uh, I've been quite critical of some of the Hondas. Uh, Africa Twin, certainly the NT1100. I thought that was a particularly boring and slow bike when I rode it. And then I got home and I edited the footage and I actually looked and saw what sort of speeds we were doing and I was pretty taken aback to the point where I thought, oh, I would quite like to take that bike out again do another vid because I kind of feel I haven't done the NT1100 justice because I think I was a little bit down on that bike. This, on the other hand, I still feel like it's a proper naughty beast. It's sort of taking you by the hand. I've said, I think I've said this before about the GS. It is more than capable, and this one now, th th this thing can dance. It definitely can dance, but it's quite happy to just take you by the hand and do a little sidestep with you. You know, a little two-step. I've been watching a bit strictly with Mrs. Teapot. Sorry. So this thing has gone from, you know, somebody that might hit the third or fourth programme to someone that could actually compete and win at the end. Who ever thought you'd have a strictly analogy on a BMW GS review? Or any bike review for that matter? Welcome to t Port one Lower Dicker. Oh, I see. Tell you what, that's looking a bit dark up ahead, isn't it? That's looking a bit moody. Typical, just had the bike blooming cleaned and ceramic coated. I will. So, what have I gone for on this bike? Well, this is the triple black model. BMW give you the sort of basic road version, which is the white one. They do the enduro version, or trophy, which is that uh, the nice blue and white sort of paint job one, which is more off-road focused, I believe. I think it has uh, slightly different suspensions, a few little tweaks there to make it more suited to being off-road. Uh, I don't think it has a centre stand. Into the Nash Rolls, where we're going straight ahead, second exit. Yes, yes, thank you, Kalimoto. And this one. And then there is the, oh, what is it? it's got a fancy name, I think it begins with a T. The green one with all the gold trimmings. Lots of people ranting and raving about it. That's like their flagship one, I believe. To be honest, I think it looks a bit chavy. Sorry. It looks like it's had a sunbed and then been down Argos and it's got all this cheap gold jewelry chucked over it, hooped earrings and all that malarkey. Not my cup of tea, I, I, don't, I don't like that. I specifically went for the triple black. So this is effectively, if you know your GSs, this is basically the TE spec. So it comes with, um, I've got this one specced up with uh, the quick shifter, the blipper, it's got heated grips, this one has a heated seat, I've had spots uh, added, this one has adaptive cruise control, it has the safety radar front and rear, you'll see on the wing mirrors here, if anything gets close you'll get a little orange triangle showing up, and it also has the safety braking feature, which I'm not keen on, and I've actually deactivated for the time being, but that's basically, if this thing detects a collision, if it thinks you're gonna be involved in a collision and you're not doing anything to avoid that, this thing will start to apply the brakes. To what extreme amount, I have no idea. My concern about that is things like uh, track days. I do take the GS on track days, and I'm just thinking, you know, if I'm quite close to a bike in front or if a bike sweeps in front of me, say as we're canking over into a corner, I don't want this bike overruling me and grabbing a fistful of, of uh, brake. I don't know if it would, but this is my bike and I don't really want to test that. Over the coming months, I definitely will activate it and just see what sort of implication that has on day-to-day -day riding, but I am not going to be testing it to the max. Certainly not intentionally. 
Uh, what else do I have on this bike? Yeah, it's got the heated seats front and rear, as in pillion. Um, I think that's all the extras that I had fitted on this. This basically is just like a TEGS. This one cost me £21,495. Yep, a big chunk of change. I buy my bikes on PCP. I can't afford to buy them outright, so the only way I can afford it, really for me, is some sort of finance deal. And I don't intend to keep a bike forever anyway, so I like to change them every sort of two, three, four years. And that's generally when the warranty runs out anyway. GS ownership is pretty reasonable as long as you're covered by the warranty. Parts and things like that are mega expensive with BMW, but if it's just your run-of-the-mill normal services, then um, one of the cheapest bikes I've ever owned. But when that warranty finishes, either pay and get it extended, or with finance, I can just chop it in and get a new one. So that's what I've done here. This one cost me £351 a month, which again is quite a significant amount. However, uh, the maximum mileage they'll let you do on finance is 20,000 a year, so, you know, that fits me, I do high miles, and I put uh, three grand deposit down for this bike. So that's the figures I'm looking at, three grand down, the highest mileage, 20,000 miles, 20,000 miles a year, it's 351 a month. And at the end of that, I either hand the bike back, or uh, I can pay off the remaining figure and the bike is mine. So at the moment, uh, you know, my plan would be just to chop it in, take out another bike, whatever that's going to be. Insurance wise, moving from the 1250 to the 1300, uh, for me was an extra 200 pounds. I think 220 pounds. I went with Bimoto. I am not sponsored by Bimoto. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. The channel used to be sponsored by them a couple of years ago, but no more. To be honest, I wish, I wish. I wasn't insured with Bimoto because I kind of feel like they did me dirty on the channel but they have still given me the most competitive deal on it and even uh, not being sponsored by them their customer service on the phone and emails is brilliant so you know credit where it's due you might find it a little bit of an issue trying to get insurance for the 1300GS at the moment this is early November 2023 at this point the insurance systems don't yet have the 1300 on on there so it's not available to select contact them give them a phone because there are systems in place at the moment occasionally they can cover you i'm sure in the next month or two it won't be an issue anymore servicing of this bike is exactly the same as before get your first service done between 400 and 1000 miles ideally it's the five six hundred mile mark in fact i think i'm doing a vid on running in so check that out and then thereafter, it's every 6,000. First 6,000, it's just a simple oil and filter check. Second 6,000, so 12,000 miles, 24. How good is your maths? It is your valve clearances. Obviously, I don't know the cost of that yet, but if it's anything like the 12 and the 1250, your 6,000 mile service interval is gonna be somewhere in the two to sort of 300 quid range, possibly a bit less depending on your dealership and the big sort of 12,000 valve clearance one that is normally for me somewhere in the region of 350 to 450 quid and I should have gone left there but I'm not because it's a proper little country lane and I don't fancy getting this covered in muck quite yet right let's get back to it right I don't know how much of that you got but the cameras are playing up in the rain now so I'm probably gonna have to call it quits and we'll come out in a day or two when the weather gets better because it is torrential at the moment. Right, see you shortly.